This is Top Accolade Global News Update. I am Abiodun Mohamed. Russian forces fired 33 rockets at civilian targets in the Ukrainian city of Kherson in the 24 hours to early Wednesday, Ukraine's military said, as fighting intensified with Russia deploying more tanks and armored vehicles on front lines. The general staff of Ukraine's armed forces said in its morning report that Russia forces were attacking populated areas on the right bank of the Dnipro River near Kherson with mortars and artillery. Russia denies targeting civilians. Pressmen were unable to immediately verify the report. Russian forces abandoned Kherson last month in one of Ukraine's most significant gains in the 11-month war, but fighting has entered a slow grinding phase as bitter winter weather has set in. In quote, there has been very little change in terms of the front line, but pressure from the enemy has intensified, both in terms of the numbers of men and the type and quantity of equipment, said Ukrainian military analyst Oli Zdanov. Zdanov said that fighting had intensified with Russia, deploying armored vehicles and tanks. The heaviest fighting has been around the eastern city of Bakhmut, a bombed out ghost town, which Russia has been trying for months to storm at huge cost in lives and further north in the cities of Zvatov and Kremina, where Ukraine is trying to break Russian defensive lines. Chinese hospitals and funeral homes were under intense pressure on Wednesday as a surging COVID-19 wave drained resources, while the scale of the outbreak and doubts over official data prompted some countries to consider new travel rules on Chinese visitors. In an abrupt change of policy, China this month began dismantling the world's strictest COVID regime of lockdowns and extensive testing putting its battered economy on course for a complete reopening next year, the lifting of restrictions which came after widespread protests against them. Miss COVID is spreading largely unchecked and likely infecting millions of people a day, according to some international health experts. The speed at which China, the last major country in the world moving towards treating the virus as endemic, has scrapped COVID rules, has left its fragile health system overwhelmed. China reported three new COVID-related deaths for Tuesday up from one for Monday, numbers that are consistent with what funeral parlors are reporting as well as with the experience of much less populous countries after they reopened. Rescue teams across nine provinces in the Philippines raised on Wednesday to try to locate 26 people missing after weekend rains, floods and landslides that have killed at least 25 people in one of its deadliest weather events this year. The National Disaster Agency on Wednesday said casualties reported so far had increased to 25 from 17 the previous day, with most deaths caused by drowning from flash floods. The rain-induced floods and landslides are unlike previous disasters in the Philippines, which are typically triggered by more severe typhoons and tropical storms, of which the archipelago nation usually sees about 20 each year. The agency also recorded more than 300 flooded areas and 20 rain-induced landslides, which collectively have forced more than 80,000 people to take shelter in evacuation centers. Most of the floods have since subsided. Local media showed images on Wednesday of people crammed in gymnasiums, turned into evacuation centers, and residents removing debris and cleaning up homes after days of heavy rains. The state weather agency said occasional light to moderate rains will continue in central and southern areas until Thursday. Kosovo closed its biggest border crossing on Wednesday after protesters blocked it on the Serbian side to support their ethnic kin in Kosovo in refusing to recognize the country's independence, with two other crossings on the Serbian border closed by similar protests on their Kosovo side since December 10th. Only three entry points between the two countries remain open. The latest protest came hours after Serbia said it had put its army on the highest level of alert following weeks of escalating tensions between Belgrade and Pristina. Serbs in Serbia used a truck and tractors on Tuesday to create the latest roadblock close to the Meda crossing on Kosovo's eastern border, Belgrade-based media reported. The obstruction is preventing thousands of Kosovars who work elsewhere in Europe from returning home for holidays. Around 50,000 Serbs living in ethnically divided northern Kosovo refused to recognize the government in Pristina or the status of Kosovo. As a country separate from Serbia, they have the support of many Serbs in Serbia and its government.
Ethiopia Airlines has resumed commercial flights to the capital of the war East Tigray region for the first time in nearly 18 months. Its chief executive, Mesfin Tassio, said the flight to Mekele would bring families back together and help restore business ties. Banking and telecommunication services have already resumed in some areas. The region was slightly cut off from the rest of the world during a two-year war between government and Tigrayan forces. An Ethiopian government delegation visited Mekele on Monday to discuss a peace deal signed last month. Tigrayan leader Debretsion Gebremije said that full peace would not return until Eritrean troops and ethnic Amhara militias leave the region. He said it was unacceptable for half of Tigray to be peaceful while killings were continuing elsewhere. Eritrea entered the war on the side of the Ethiopian government but was not part of the peace deal brokered by the African Union. That is the size of Top Accolade Global News Update. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy Midweek!